Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. And today we are going to have a hot take. A hot take on the Apple event, the 420 Apple event. And after watching the event, I can only assume that that's why they um, they scheduled it on 420. Because, man, uh, we got a new iPhone color. iPhone uh, 12 purple. It's a very light sort of lavender purple. It'll be available to order on April 30th and, and then it'll be in your whenever it comes out. Uh, AirTags. <laughs> finally, finally, we have AirTags after all this time, after all this speculation. And, and of course, they are exactly what we thought they were. They are little tags that use the Find My network to keep track, help you keep track of things that don't necessarily, uh, you know, find themselves. <laughs> So, the you know, your keys, your purse, maybe your wallet, maybe your kids. Uh, but it, it does seem like it's going to be a kind of cool thing. It's $29 for one and four for $99. Again, pre-order on Friday in your hands on April the 30th. Apple TV. Apple TV 4K. Okay, so it's just, it's not any different in terms of the box. The box is the same, but it gets the A12 Bionic chip inside which is really good. I think the current 4K uh, Apple TV has the A8. Anyway, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the current Apple TV, but there is something wrong with the current Apple TV remote, which has to be the most frustrating and annoying remote control that I have ever <laughs> tried to use in my entire life. Uh, I love Apple TV. I find that it's the, the most intuitive, the easiest to use user experience in uh, in all of smart TV land. I like the Apple TV app because it brings in all of the subscription stuff that I have and shows me what I've watched and what's up next. And it'll show me when a new thing comes out. So I like all of that stuff. Uh, but the remote control has been garbage. Okay, the little track pad that they had and all that kind of stuff was just not good so now they have a new remote it looks kind of like the old remote it has a circular uh a circular sort of d-pad on it where you can go up and down back and forth and and then the circular part the circular rim around it works as a jog wheel that's all good going back to that is a much better situation than than what we had before. So Apple TV, yay, I am excited. $179 for the base model and $199 for the for the one that's next. Uh, and it's going to be out in the second half of May. Then they got to the new iMac, which I put exclamation points uh, beside this because I was actually really excited about the new iMac. And, and I wanted a new iMac to sort of take over my I want a new iMac to replace my current MacBook Pro setup that I'm using at this desk. And I was hoping that it would be a, a more pro level uh, Mac device. Instead, we got something else. At first, the first thing that, that got to me was like they, they spun around all these colors and everything else. And they were like red and blue and pink and green and orange and all this other stuff. They showed no neutral colors whatsoever. And like the, the front side is it has a white bezel, no black bezel available. And uh, it would no, no, they it is smaller than the previous iMac by 50% volume, 24-inch uh, display, uh, which is a 4.5K display, which is fine. It's fine. I mean, it's great. It's those the, the iMac displays have always been great. Now, they only introduced this 24-inch model, which, again, kind of bums me out. They did put a 1080p camera in this thing finally, and they have their image signal processing thing going on inside the new M1 chip that they've got in there. Now they didn't do an M1X or an M2 or whatever it is. Everything they released today was M1 in terms of the computer stuff and all that, which means they, they're not more powerful than anything else that has already come out. So no new M1 chip is what I'm trying to say. Uh, let's see. It has a three mic array. They claim studio quality. Three speaker system. They claim has been much better. Supports spatial audio in stuff that supports that. Now, as they continued to show images behind the speakers of these uh, of these Macs, they did in fact show a silver one on the far right hand side, which I guess means that there is a silver option, but they didn't feature that 
in any of the graphics or animations or anything. So I guess there is uh, something uh, something for the person who <laughs> doesn't want doesn't want like you know a, a child's desk. I call this iMac Kindergarten Edition because. I just can't see, I can't see the use for the colors. I can't see why anybody would want to like lock themselves into a pink desk for however long they're going to use this thing. But I might be wrong. You can tell me down in the comments. Now they say it's 85% faster than the current 21.5 inch iMac. Now let's be clear. The 21.5 inch iMac has forever been a product that no one should buy. It's a dog of a product. I don't think at least, you know, I don't think you can buy one with a dedicated graphics processor. Maybe you can order one, but I, I've i never paid enough attention to really know. The t so touting 85% faster than the 21.5 inch iMac is is sort of faint praise. I mean, yes, it's it's faster. It's going to be on par with the mini, the MacBook Pro and the, and the MacBook Air that came out. But I want an iMac that's more powerful than those computers. And we didn't get it this time. Uh, they came up with a new power system where you plug it into the back and then it has a little power brick. So basically what they've done here, they took away all of the other ports. They've got four USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back. They took away all the other ports, uh, <laughs> which, why? Why would you do that to a desktop computer? What is the point? No USB-C-A, no Ethernet, no SD card reader, no nothing on the back of this machine. So it's clearly not uh, geared toward a professional use case, which is what I need and what I wanted. I mean, it's cool looking. It's got the little hinged base and it's very thin and all they turned it they turned it into a laptop <laughs> they turned it into an ipad with a built-in stand except for you can't uh you can't use your fingers on it they did come out with new magic keyboard a small magic keyboard magic mouse magic uh, trackpad that are all white so that you can use them with these new springtime colors that they came up with um and that's all fine, I guess. Uh, the, there's Touch ID on the keyboard now, which is probably the coolest thing about this new iMac is the Touch ID. It's going to be $12.99 for the base model, $14.99 for an upgraded model. They flashed this, the, the stuff on the screen so fast I couldn't see what the specs of the more, uh, the more tricked out version is. But I'll put them on the screen here so you can see them. Pre-order on the 30th of this month, so 10 days from now, and then... Second half of May. They didn't use dates. Second half of May for, for that. Um, that leaves us with the iPad, which is one of the things that we expected. The iMac was kind of the, we don't know, but maybe it's going to happen. But the iPad was something that we'd expected. iPad Pro, 12.9-inch uh, and 11-inch iPad Pros were, were something that we thought we were going to get. Now, big news is they put an M1 chip inside the iMac. It now has a mini LED liquid retina XDR display. So it's basically a similar technology to what's in the Pro XDR display. Uh, they have, uh, it's Thunderbolt. They didn't say it was Thunderbolt 3. They just said it now has Thunderbolt. So I don't know what that means. You can get four, you can get 5G on it, uh, up to four gigabits per second speed in proper conditions, which no one will ever achieve anytime. Better camera, better microphones. They showed a lot of, a lot of people doing like camera related stuff. Uh, is it still gauche to, uh, to use your iPad as a camera? I, I don't know. They've got an ultra wide camera on the front, which makes the front facing camera a little bit better. Still has face ID on it. I wrote here the iPad pro is the real professional device here. Unfortunately, the unfortunate thing about the iPad Pro, and this has been the knock on using the iPad Pro as a professional device for a long time, is that the iPad Pro runs iPad OS, which is, which is still a mobile OS. It doesn't run Final Cut Pro. It doesn't run Logic Pro. It doesn't run enough professional applications for a professional to choose to use the iPad over something else. Can it be done? Yes. LumaFusion will take the place of your your Final Cut Pro or your Premiere Pro or whatever. But it's still it's not it's not a fully featured professional computer. And the other problem with that is it has no accessible file structure. So you can't do what you can do on a computer, which is like make a folder, 
put it inside of a drive, go get it, you know, make a folder hierarchy. You can't do any of those things. It has sort of a janky half-assed folder file system that doesn't make any sense to me even after years of using it. They push these iPad Pros out into like serious professional potential territory, but without everything that they need to survive out there. There are going to be a lot of people who are going to be able to use an iPad Pro and not have to have anything else. But I don't think those people needed anything more than an iPad Pro or an iPad before that. There's not anything different enough about this iPad. I mean, I have a 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro that I can't even push to its limits. And I don't use it for anything that will push it to its limits. I use it for light business typing, you know, writing, that kind of stuff. I watch videos. That's all I use it for. This new one has an M1, and I don't see any reason why it needs an M1 because there's nothing about it that is going to make it any more professional than what the iPad is. They kept the prices the same for the iPads. That's good. So the the 11 inch is $7.99 to start, and the 12 point nine inches 1099 to start their pre-order on april 30th and available second part of may you can get up to two terabytes of storage in the 12.9 inch model the 12.9 inch is also the only one that gets that liquid retina xdr mini led display so if you want that you've got to get the 12.9 uh this was a very weird Apple event. There was no marquee, like, yes, gotta have it, let me pre-order right now kind of device for me. But I think that a lot of people were waiting for professional level devices, at least a professional level device that could take over the workload of the Intel Max that people still are holding on to, like myself. It is what it is. It is what it is. That's the report from the Apple event. You let me know what you think down in the comments below, and we'll have a boisterous discussion. Otherwise, thanks once again for being here. If this is your first time, come on back, subscribe, bell notify, yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, if you want to see another video that's somehow related to the stuff that's here, then you could click one of the videos that are going to pop up on the screen here. There are links down in the description to all the stuff that I use for my, for my setup, as well as other videos. And, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Avail yourself of those at your leisure. Once again, thanks so much for being here. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech, so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.